What's up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. It is me Zander and I am coming to you from Indonesia. Today I want to talk to you about what it's like living in a hostel. I have been staying in hostels now pretty much consistently every single day for the last four months but today I am lucky enough to be coming to you from a homestay. So I thought I would take the opportunity to stand and talk like a weirdo to the camera which I don't normally get the chance to do because normally I'm sharing a room with a million other people. Now a lot of people will avoid going to stay in hostels because you're going to be sharing a room with 6, 10, 12, 22 different people that you've never met before and it is quite an intimidating thing if you've never done it. Now that I've been staying in hostels for such a long time, I feel like I've got a really good feel for what different hostels are like. The first thing that you should know is every hostel is completely different with its vibe, with the things that it offers, its facilities, the staff members, the people, whatever it may be. The important thing to do is your research. I use Hostel World most of the time to book my hostels and so I will always read up on reviews and check out what the vibe of the hostel is going to be like before I get there especially if I'm planning on staying there for more than two nights at a time because you don't want to be stuck at a party hostel if you want to chill out you don't want to be stuck in a quiet hostel if you want to party and that sort of thing if you're staying in a place that's well known in the traveler community pretty much all of Thailand all of Vietnam etc you're gonna have the same sort of stuff offered by the hostel. They're gonna tell you where you can get your laundry done, what tours you can book, how to get to the airport, how to get to your next destination. So when you're staying in a dorm room, when it can be anything from four to 40 people, I've stayed in both and I've had as equally good or bad time in either. It's a question, how can you get any privacy? Well, it is difficult. Some hostels do offer a curtain that you can slide across your bed so that you can just shut yourself out from socializing if you need to. When I first started traveling, it was kind of a requirement for me that every hostel that I went to would have the curtain so I could just have that little bit of privacy when I need it. But within two, three weeks of traveling, that's gone because the longer you travel the more the luxury goes down when you start going to the more remote places or the places that there aren't so many backpackers that's when uh, the quality of the hostels can tend to drop um, just because they're not so used to having a high standard to compete against and lots of other hostels but you get used to it you really do like now if I don't have a curtain I don't have Wi-Fi and I don't have a bed to that point I'm like okay these are my cards that I've been dealt let's deal with it but if you are looking for that little bit of privacy the dorm room kind of scares you to this day I get it I really do it can be a little intimidating at first most hostels if not at least some hostels will offer some kind of a private room usually you can share with another person if you're traveling with just one other or a lot of the time there are solo single rooms that you can get in a hostel they do tend to be a little bit more expensive but they're not as expensive as hotels and you maybe might have to share a bathroom still one thing people are constantly worried about is whether or not you're going to get any sleep in hostels this really does entirely depend on the place that you are in and the hostel that you're in if you're in a town or a city that's known for constant partying the likelihood is the hostels there are going to be set up for that kind of environment they're going to be offering free beer at happy hour they're going to be doing events in the hostel to make sure everyone gets drunk and spends money at their bar and they're going to be playing loud music a lot of the time there will always be a cut-off point where they say you have to be quiet after this point it's just whether or not people actually pay attention to it and follow those rules you are definitely going to get woken up in your hostel more than once it's not every night and um, most nights in fact nine times out of ten I'm having a peaceful night's sleep every night even in some of the party hostels but you have to be prepared for the fact that you are sharing a room with other people. People are getting up early to go to the airport, so they may be packing their bags. People are stumbling in late drunk. And a lot of the time you will hear people having sex and that's just the fact of the matter. You have to be able to deal with it. It's not nice when it happens. It kind of freaks you out a little bit. But for me, headphones in, eye mask on, dead to the world. Always, always, always carry an eye mask, headphones and earplugs if headphones don't work for you. But like I said, 9 times out of 10 I am getting a peaceful night's sleep. But a lot of the time people are worried about whether or not your stuff is safe in a hostel. Now I have stayed in a couple of hostels where there haven't been lockers available. 99% of the time there is a locker. You do need to usually bring your own padlock, so that's a good thing to travel with. Otherwise you're going to end up buying one while you're out here. But today I haven't experienced any trouble in any hostel that I've stayed in, regardless of whether or not they have a locker but that doesn't speak for everyone there is 
a chance that someone in that community is going to steal your stuff. So it's a good idea to always put your stuff in your locker. One thing people are really worried about about solo travelling is how are you going to meet people? Well the best way to do that is by staying in hostels. In fact, pretty much everyone that I've met has been off been from my hostel and it snowballs from there. Maybe you'll meet locals because you're out and about. Maybe you'll meet people from other hostels because they knew them from a previous destination and stuff like that. But nine times out of 10, the group that you're gonna end up going out for the day with or going out for the night with is gonna be people from your hostel. Now it can be pretty intimidating when you arrive at a new place to go and jump straight into a big group and just say, hey, but the more you do it, the easier it gets. Even still, if I turn up at a party hostel where the music's blaring and there's a big group all drinking together, to stumble in as the sober guy and just say, hey, is really, really scary. But usually what I'll do is find the one or two people who are sitting a little bit quieter on their own and just ask if you want a drink. I'm gonna say about 50% of people who are staying in hostels are solo travellers. That's based on absolutely no evidence or statistics whatsoever. It's just kind of my experience. But that means there's a hell of a lot of people who are in the same position as you, who are also looking to socialise unless you've booked a hostel where the reviews say this is not a sociable hostel, people are not talking to each other, which does happen and I do stay in those when I need a few days away just to reset and have some peace and quiet and go on namaste and when I'm done with that I'll go back into a hostel that says it's a sociable one. If you are particularly worried about whether or not you're going to meet people, the best way to do it is to ensure that the hostel has a common area, a kitchen, a hangout area, whatever, a bar, something like that, just to make sure that there's a place where people can meet. Because some hostels are literally just a bedroom and a bathroom, and sometimes there's not always even a reception. So again, do your research on the hostel before you go, especially if you're a first time traveler that's nervous about those sorts of things. If you're backpacking for a long time, one thing you are gonna have to get used to is the drinking culture. Now I'm four months into backpacking, and I spent exclusively pretty much the first two months of my backpacking trip drinking nearly every day. At this point, I'm not so bothered about getting trashed all the time and drinking a lot because it does get a bit repetitive and it does get a bit much. That's not to say I'm not down for a fun time, but often when you get to new hostels, people are drinking all the time and you don't want to be the guy that's not drinking. So you have to pick your vibe. Just last week, I stayed in a party hostel because I wanted to make sure I had a fun party for New Year's Eve. This week, I'm staying in more quiet hostels where I know I can sit and chill and practice guitar, still meet people, but not necessarily have to get drunk. That isn't just hostel dependent, that's also destination dependent. Here in Nusa Lembongo, it's a pretty chilled out area, there's not really much nightlife. If I went somewhere like Kuta in Bali, I'm gonna expect to be drinking and partying every night, which is why I'm not there. And the last thing that I think you should know about hostels is, sorry guys, you're not gonna meet many gay people. Four months into backpacking, I've met a handful, less than a handful of other gay backpackers. If I'm meeting other gay people, usually it's gonna be a local person, but generally not many backpackers. And that's where it goes to you. The reason that I am making these videos and enjoying solo traveling and vlogging is because I wanna encourage other gay backpackers to get out there and see the world. There isn't enough gay backpackers out here and it is a shame to see it. I don't know why. This is a question that I ask to you as commenters and viewers. Why do you think there's not many other gay backpackers? Are people scared of Asia? Are people worried about what might happen in a hostel? Are they worried about not meeting other gay people? I don't know, but this is something I would like to see change. If you did like this video about life in hostels, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Follow my other social media down below, and I will see you again soon. Goodbye.